Welcome to our last panel of celebration. This is uh, on a new topic we haven't ever covered before on a dedicated panel. In it, it is an area that's been emerging actually a lot on in discussions among collectors. You see uh, this sort of category of collecting uh, touch on uh, you know some general Star Wars collecting areas on food food groups and so on. And so I, I'm really excited to have our panelists here, Duncan Jenkins and Jonathan McElwin, who are going to cover household and kitchen items. Thank you. Thanks. Well, welcome to the real closing ceremony of Star Wars Celebration Chicago. Uh, as Gus said, uh, this was an area that we thought needed some attention. There's a lot of unloved things here, and uh, these are some of my favorite things, and I think Duncan's as well. So we hope to cover uh, sort of the breadth of things that are in this category and uh, maybe fill you in on some of uh, the details that maybe you aren't aware of. Yeah, and I, I would hazard a guess that probably at least 10% of the people in this room have some sort of Star Wars in their, in their house. Um, maybe a little higher than 10%. But, uh, you know, over the last few years, companies like ThinkGeek and Hallmark have uh, just created myriad Star Wars items for your household, just every thing that you could imagine. Uh, but in the you know, original trilogy uh, at the very beginning, there weren't quite as many products, and so those are the ones that we're going to highlight. We're not really going to highlight as much of the, the ones that are currently available, so we'll just take a look back. So we'll start off with a company called uh, ATF, and so that's not alcohol, tobacco, and firearms. That's the American Toy and Furniture. Uh, and so they did a line for Return of the Jedi and some of the, the Wicket the Ewok line there in the 83-84 and uh, a lot of different uh, pieces that were fun. Very difficult to find, particularly in the original packaging. Uh, so here we have the R2 Toy Toter uh, for your uh, toys that you can put them away and that kid just looks like he's having a grand old time cleaning up his room there. So. And there were a couple different domes available for R2, correct? Correct, yeah. So there's a dimensional one, you know, one that's a little more bas relief and one that's more uh, smooth. And so then uh, Coat Rack with uh, Darth Vader versus Luke imagery. And a lot of really good and unique artwork uh, that was used on, on some of these. Uh, there's the tabletop, and then the table came with uh, chairs that all had Return of the Jedi logos on it. And then um, a book bookcase with a toy chest on it. They did those. A lot of these were done both in the Return of the Jedi style and the Wicket, the Ewoks. Uh, and then if we have a little rocking chair there for the, the Wicket as well. But uh, just a tough line to, to get in good condition. I like that the toy chest is just jam full of Kenner toys. That's yeah, pretty cool. Exactly. More realistic, that true. All right, so from uh, Comdial ATC, here is a Darth Vader speaker phone. So this would look pretty good on uh, your executive desk at, at, uh, <laughs> at work. So pretty neat item with uh, big old push buttons there on the front. And at the time, I mean, speaker phones weren't all that, uh, weren't that big, you know. I mean, they were just starting to take off, and so it was a pretty unique product. Yeah, I remember seeing these like at shopping malls and, and sort of things, I don't, not being widely available. And, no, and they were very expensive for the time, too. You know, probably, what, $70, $75, I think, was the, the retail. You know, in 1983 money, that's like $4 million or something, I think. So. <laughs> All right, here we have the switcheroos. These are uh, pretty cool. So uh, d they're dimensional light switch covers, and you would attach these to uh, you know, a light switch that flips up and down uh, with a mechanism and then mount this thing to it. And uh, they were available in the US and Canada on these three characters, uh, but they all have uh, glow-in-the-dark movable eyes according to the packaging. So now you know where R2-D2's eyes are. And as you can just think about that Darth Vader there just staring at you all night long with the eyes glowing, it's just terrifying, but, you know. And they're pink when you uh, flip the switch, so I'm not sure which is more disturbing. <laughs> A company called uh, Metal Box made um, Metal Boxes and, uh, for the Empire Strikes Back. They did a, a wide range and some really great graphics on them, uh, some really nice artwork and photos, uh, different sizes, something called a space trunk. They did banks. 
they did uh, one of those little combination ones so you could, you know, have nine choices basically of what the code would be and put something in it and, you know, basically you could just pop it open. But uh, at least you could pretend like you were locking something in your little tin chest there. And then uh, I guess they were, you know, um, being very precinct in their uh, ideas that Star Wars would be forever and the, the little boxes there that you see on the far side with the, the Luke on Tauntaun, Lando and those um, are little like pill boxes. So I guess they knew that eventually we were all gonna become older fans and need a, a little Star Wars pill box. And so there they are. Maybe snuff boxes will come back too, I don't know. And then for um, Re Return of the Jedi, again, Return of the Jedi and the, the Wicked, uh, the Ewok line, a uh, company called Chen Industries did a wide variety of, of metal containers too. I guess metal was big in the 80s. Um, you know, it's 80s hair metal, uh, that's true. So, uh, but you know, little TV trays, you might remember TV trays sitting in front of the television with those little metal legs and having your bowl of cereal while you're watching cartoons. Um, just, an, you know, any size that they could come up with, the trash cans, and uh, I still don't have the Ewoks trash can, but, uh, but the Jedi one, I really like the artwork on that. So again, a unique line that was done in a lot of different sizes and, and flavors. And I like the Darth Vader, uh, he's pointing straight at you. It's kind of like the Uncle Sam, I want yeah. you sort of thing. It's pretty cool. Um, moving on, these are the Rumpf tankards. So these might, uh, might have lived in your kitchen, but maybe more so up on a shelf. Uh, so these are among my favorite things. And um, if you focus on Chewie's eyes, I'm gonna flip to the next slide. Uh, look at Chewie there on the bottom. It sort of looks like he's kind of got beady eyes and turned that frown upside, or <laughs> smile upside down. Uh, so uh, it, these came in a couple different boxes. I think there were four different ones. So there's a couple of those on, on the side. I believe the earlier ones had the picture of the three tankards, and then later on sort of each uh, tankard got its own label. Um, and there were a few different box variations as well. Um, the image in the middle uh, is a sort of resume sheet uh, for Rumpf, Jim Rumpf, who was the sculptor. And I think it's been reported in uh, several things that I've read that, you know, how much George Lucas uh, particularly liked that mug. So he had that sort of prominently featured in, on his resume, that letter from George Lucas um, highlighting how much he did indeed like this one. So uh, Sigma Ceramics did a, a wide variety of, of household items uh, in ceramic, everything from mugs to mirrors, uh, picture frames. Uh, a couple of the more notable ones are the snow speeder that has um, for your toothbrushes, uh, the soap dish for the land speeder, the Luke on Tauntaun that's a teapot, uh, you know, one of the only teapots that uh, was available for, forever. And then, of course, the infamous uh, C-3PO tape dispenser, which um, don't know who was in charge of a licensing approval at that time, but uh, yeah, sure, why not? Now, not everything's licensed, uh, so these are some unlicensed spoons, but just kind of an interesting combination of imagery on the spoons. Uh, anyone want to take a guess as to uh, what those are from? The Topps Trading Card Stickers. So the Series 1 stickers uh, that were available in 1977 uh, used those images and um, those were licensed, so they did it the right way, but uh, the Spoon people decided, hey, let's shrink those down and, and use that image. But just kind of an unusual thing. I mean, Spoons and Star Wars, you don't really think of those two together, but there they had them. Okay, this is one of my favorites. Uh, this is a pine saw, so a promotion to get uh, Star Wars flyers. Uh, note that they are the official size and weight, not some cheap knockoff. Um, uh, the, the, the image on the left is a, sort of a clipping out of a, a newspaper uh, coupon insert. Uh, and it shows, interestingly, it shows uh, sort of different designs, early conceptual designs for the Frisbees that feature photographic imagery rather than the uh, final images. Uh, the image on the right is a store display, a fairly large cardboard header. Uh, 
very challenging to track down are the pine saw bottles. Uh, you know, in order to get the flyers, you had to uh, clip out the coupon at the top and uh, mail that in. So uh, it's just, you, as you can imagine, uh, pretty rare for those things to have survived. So uh, we know of at least two sizes that these are available in, um, but I just found that larger size uh, within the last six months. So I was pretty psyched to find that one day in my eBay searches. I like the fact that it's half used, that it's not unopened, but they couldn't quite run out of it either or pour it out. They just decided, well, we're done with it. Let's throw it up on eBay. Yeah, the other one came, it, well, yeah, that one's kind of cloudy. It's got these murky specks in it, and so I'm not really, uh, you know, it's been opened, and, uh, you know, it's not going to, uh, I guess I could fill it. That's one of the questions people ask me, like, would it be worth more if it was filled to pine? So I said, well, not really, not to me. No, not to me either. <laughs> Probably better if it were empty. Yeah. It's like food collectibles, too. You really don't want 20-year-old milk or something like that uh, saved. So here are the, uh, the flyers, uh, and they came uh, mailed in this, uh, uh, you know, nondescript kind of brown packaging. And the image that was on the right on the previous slide was the insert that you got along with your Frisbee. Uh, uh, flyer. Go, flyer. Yeah, it's not I'm a Frisbee. Sorry. Can't say Ooh. Frisbee. That's unofficial. That's sorry. Right. So anyways, you get all six, uh, and uh, you think you're done collecting these things, but there's variation, of course. Uh, so the X-Wing Frisbee, uh, X-Wing versus TIE Fighter Frisbee, uh, is available there with, uh, with and without X-Wing Fighter printed on the circle at the bottom of the image. But nobody pays attention to all those minor variations? Not for, to, yeah. yeah, no, who would do that? All right, so uh, most of the stuff we've looked at so far has been from the United States, uh, but this is from episode one and from uh, Belgium. The company Dixon's, or, well, the, the soap is laundry detergent. Again, putting Star Wars on everything. If you'll remember Phantom Menace, they were practically slapping Star Wars on you as you walked by. Uh, and so here's this uh, laundry detergent, and so we thought it might be kind of fun. They had some little Star Wars stickers inside for your little sticker album, but uh, here's a look at the uh, commercial. <laughs> Spaar nu bij Dix van Waspoeder alle gratis Star Wars stickers voor je Star Wars stickeralbum. Gratis Star Wars stickers, alleen bij Dix van. Of course, there's two different sizes to That's collect. Right. <laughs> All right. Um, Puffs Tissues, this was a really fun promotion from 1980 for The Empire Strikes Back. So three different worlds that they visited in the movies. So we do three different styles of uh, Puffs tissues. Finding these still unopened, very, very difficult. Finding them at all, very difficult. Um, but of course, go ahead and let's see the next one. So three was bad enough. Now underneath on the bottom are characters you can color. And so they give you a Han and Leah in their Hoth outfits for Hoth. And then they give you Yoda and R uh, Yoda and R two D two for Dagobah, and then finish it off with uh, Luke and Vader for Bespin. So there's really instead of three, there's six to collect. So you take something that's very difficult and then multiply it times six. I think that says sixty eight cents there. So that yeah, they cost a little more these days. Yeah. Uh, so in Germany uh, and Austria uh, at the time of Revenge of the Sith, there was a pretty large promotion from a company called Zewa, and uh, they had uh, these tissues. Uh, so on the right and on the bottom are individual packed tissues, small packets you would keep in, in your pocket or in your purse. Uh, on the upper left there is there was a large box, kind of what I think is a normal cardboard box uh, of tissues, one of those for each of the films. Uh, they also did paper towels, and so you could get those in a six-pack on the left there, but you could also get the jumbo pack there with a, uh, a plush Yoda. So pretty weird-looking thing to see this Yoda sort of <laughs> stuck inside this clear plastic sack. Uh, but pretty cool. I I'm sure you'd be excited if you got Yoda in your paper towels. From some angles, he kind of looks like the uh, old man from the Muppets, too. So it's just a really weird mashup there. 
And of course, uh, you know, this was the point at which you could uh, potentially say they had made Star Wars everything. This is Star Wars toilet paper. That is pretty much what everybody says, okay, well, if everything, is there even Star Wars toilet paper? And yes, there is. And you may have heard this already, but uh, the promotion that they tried to, to mount on this was to wipe out the dark side. So. <laughs> For some reason, that wasn't approved. <laughs> Can't imagine that. Uh, so the, the uh, tissue promotions have continued uh, through the current day after a, a fairly large uh, lag, I'd say. But starting with uh, the new trilogy, these are some Scotty tissues from Japan with some pretty cool graphics on them. Uh, Kleenex has had some uh, recent promotions in the U.S. Uh, here's one for Rogue One. Even uh, Mexico and the United Kingdom have had uh, some as well. So it is something that's kind of blossoming, as you know. The, the Disney merchandising machine is in full force all around the world. So wouldn't surprise me if there was, you know, Indonesian tissues or something like that that we'll be finding before too long. No doubt. Uh, so this was pretty neat, uh, sort of recent stuff. So the GLAD, uh, you know, kind of... Uh, eventually disposable uh, plastic storage containers uh, for leftover food or packing lunches or so forth, as well as uh, just plastic bags. And uh, there have been some, you know, more recent ones by Ziploc as well. But this GLAD line was sort of uh, went on for a, quite a while yeah. with uh, a lot of variations. And again, something that's shown up in Mexico and a couple other countries as well. So Dixie Cups is a very famous promotion from the vintage line. Uh, many people will remember these. So we'll, look, we'll take a look. They were th for, uh, throughout the entire trilogy, Star Wars Empire Jedi, and we'll look at all of those. So we'll start off with the, the Star Wars ones. And one thing that you'll notice is that that's um, not a typo there. That is 1980 for the Star Wars line of Dixie Cups. So most people kind of remember them as a Star Wars era because of the packaging, and they clearly are all Star Wars, all of the cups and all of the imagery on the packaging, uh, but they didn't come out until early of 1980, so it was just before the release of Empire Strikes Back that uh, these boxes were available. But fantastic artwork there. You've got eight different boxes to collect and uh, you know, unique to this line. Again, one of the things that's so fun about some of these promotions and some of the packaging is that they are their own unique branding and, and art uh, and instantly recognizable for what they are, as opposed to the same image used on countless millions of different items. And so this makes it a lot more fun to collect, a little more um, you know, visually appealing to see the variations and the, the, uh, the differences and things there. So you can see you can have um, some coupons, some things from the Sunday circulars uh, or the, the Sunday comic section, and then a store display down there in the lower corner. But uh, some pretty significant rebates if for the time, 75 cents up to $5. I mean, that's a pretty significant rebate there. I'm guessing you had to buy quite a few boxes to get that $5 rebate. It was rebate. a pallet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, and as a food collector, uh, we both like the, you know, the crossover of us. Uh, you'll see several of these promotions crossing over with food related. So, uh, you know, the, the coupon at the bottom there has a crossover with Lipton tea. And there wasn't, um, there were 40 different uh, cups to collect for the first series, uh, but there was no good collation of them in the boxes. So depending on what box you, you opened, you know, you probably wouldn't get a full set, but you might get a, a good number of them. And then the next box you might open might have almost all the same ones and one or two different ones. So it was, it was very random. Uh, but one of the nice ways to display them is uh, this way that they're all flattened out so you can see the full image because it's always very difficult. You know, there's such good artwork the whole way around the 360 on the, the thing. So kind of, kind of fun to see there. Yeah, the, um, the t-shirt author there in the middle, uh, you can see that that's a, a collage basically of the characters off the box, uh, off of all eight boxes collaged onto a t-shirt. And they did a very similar thing in the Empire line. Kind of funny to see in the store display too, you got the photo of the kid holding up the two. You can't really tell, but he's a very 80s kid. Um, and then they used the same image, but just as a line art 
for the uh, comic section uh, art there. Uh, so it's kind of a, a unique looking one. All right, so in 1981, the follow-up to the quote-unquote Star Wars Cups was actually uh, the story card promotion. So this was kind of a warm-up to the full-blown Empire Strikes Back promotion, and it took me quite a while, but I w I've concluded, I think I've reached the end, although there were a few other boxes of this era, but I've never found them with this offer. Uh, but I know of 12 different boxes and uh, uh and these are all cups, as you see on the box images, no Star Wars on the cups themselves, really just the advertising snipe on the outside. Uh, and then in each box, you would get a strip of the cards. You see those on the left, they came in these strips of four. There's 24 cards to collect, um, and they were cut off at different points. I'm, I've never seen an uncut sheet or strip of these, um, but I have confirmed that you can get uh, basically 24 different variations. They're always in the same order, but which card you know, starts the strip uh, can be any of the 24 cards. Uh, there was also a, a mail-in offer for the placemats. Uh, in the lower left there is the, the poster, and the poster has these little cutouts where you're meant to insert, cut apart the cards and insert them into the poster, and it would sort of from upper left to ro lower right tell the story of The Empire Strikes Back. But pretty good art. I mean, it's just a, a unique poster by itself, even without putting the, the things in there. But I always thought that was an odd way of, of doing things. You would expect them to cut the cards in the same way each time, but you're going to cut these four, and then you're going to move over one and cut the same four, but just one different. And It's, a, it's a, a weird thing, but to get 24 of those strips of four is kind of what I'm after. So... So uh, Empire Strikes Back rolls around, and so now we're back to our eight boxes again. Uh, again, unique artwork. It's very, very stunning. It's uh, just very dynamic. This is uh, also taking place in 1981, uh, so a lot of people will remember these from the Empire era, but it was really 81 when these were available. And then there were multiple variations on those boxes as well. So you can see the Luke on the Tauntaun uh, is a, just one example, but all eight would have come with the $1 rebate on the front or without. And then the, the Falcon there, you can see the, the small one is just the regular US, and then the, the larger one is a Canadian version. So we blew it up a little bit so you can see that it's got a little uh, bilingual going on there at the bottom. The advertisement in the upper left there is a crossover with Hawaiian Punch. Everyone loves Hawaiian Punch. Um, hard to see, I guess, but uh, you can, there's a T-shirt and a hat that go with it. Again, that sort of collage of uh, the box images. And there was a third version of the um, boxes that you could also get, which had a poster and magazine-style uh, book that, that you could order as well. So it had the same front as the regular one, but a different back. So we're, again, becoming more and more variation happy here. So uh, sort of in the gap between Empire Strikes Back uh, and uh, Return of the Jedi, uh, there were the, this line of the Star Wars Saga cups, and there were four of these boxes, uh, and they were each available with and without the win a movie part or with Darth Vader. I wonder what that would have been like. Wouldn't you imagine Darth Vader showing up at your party? And of course, that was back before the 501st and all that, so you, know, you didn't see Darth Vader's walking around all the time. That would have been... You would have been the coolest kid in the universe there at your party, for sure. They also had a, a contest on the back with it. Of that contest, one of the things you could do was win a, a patch uh, if you were one of the first 100 people to, uh, to enter. As I think it was 100, but uh, I did that as a kid and, and got one of the patches, so I still have that one. And for Return of the Jedi, then, a uh, line of four um, different art on the packaging for the US. The Canada only had three. Uh, Canadians, you can see there, use the, the double uh, logo, so a French and an English Jedi logo. But the, the Ewoks was not available in Canada. And the cups themselves are uh, different between the countries as well. Um, so it's interesting that the Ewoks cup was not, or box was not available in Canada um, and is also the most challenging of the four U.S. boxes to track down. And if I remember correctly, it seems like all of the other 
um, runs told you how many cups were in that series, but I don't think the packaging for Jedi ever told you how many uh, are in there. So it is a, a challenge to try and track down and make sure that you had um, exactly the right, the full set. So in Japan, uh, Kodak did a promotion that was um, a really unique one. These are very difficult to find uh, anything from that, but particularly the paper cups are, are very difficult. There's um, several different ones, images from uh, Jedi, the little tray there, the metal tray that was a prize, uh, same way with the, uh, the little pencil tin and uh, there was actually a little rubber ball that you could bounce and a, a banner, Jedi logo banner. Um, those are the ones that I've found so far. There may even be other pieces from that promotion as well. Um, but kind of not something that you would have expected, you know, a company like Kodak to be involved in, but that uh, came out of Japan. Uh, this is, you'll have to bear with me, uh, this is some of my engineer's humor. I call this the solo squared promotion. Uh, so it, I think they couldn't resist, uh, and it would have been uh, sad if they hadn't done uh, a, a promotion on uh, solo cups for the solo movie. So there were a number of different uh, plates, uh, you know, the different styles of plates, and if you're a variation hunter, you need to collect all of those. Uh, for the cups themselves, they came in both red and blue, and you can sort of see on that image of a shelf there, you could get different quantities of the, of the cups. So again, the variation hunter is looking to have all of these. Okay, applause. Everybody will remember that if you were collecting in 1999, Star Wars applause, because that was just very ubiquitous for the Phantom Menace. Everywhere you looked, there was um, Star Wars merchandise, and everywhere you looked at the Star Wars merchandise, it was applause. And so these are some of the uh, little silly straws that were available. I have a Jar Jar, an R2, and a, a Pit Droid, uh, each in different kind of comical poses for making your drinking that much more fun. <coughs> All right, these are the, uh, Wilton did a, a fair amount uh, in the Empire Strikes Back era, and so these are images of cake pans that they did, which were actually uh, came boxed, and they're not, uh, I, I would say they're a little less common than the uh, hard aluminum ones. So these are sort of a, uh, it's like a, it's aluminum that's kind of folded. So I think it would have been a real challenge. I don't have an image of them, but I think it would have been a real challenge to actually get the cake out of those pans. Yeah, almost like a one-use kind of pan. Yeah, right. And the, the box itself, too, is very flimsy. So finding these in, in good condition is very, very difficult. To, but it's fun with the cake graphics on there and the little photo inset, so... So then there were, oh, there's an image of the what I meant. Uh, so you can kind of see what the R2 inside the box looks like closer to the photo in the middle. And then there were four of these aluminum pans. Uh, each came with an insert, uh, a color insert that you see there. And then uh, underneath that, there were also a, a fold-out instruction book that told you sort of which tips to put on to kind of make the different icing uh, that you'd put on this. And all of that, I remember all of that food dye and sort of what, what you would look like after you got done eating that. Uh, the picture in the middle is uh, me for my birthday, uh, probably in 1980. Um, so my mom made me the R2-D2 cake and the, the pan in the lower right is uh, the pan that she used to make that. And the, uh, the other thing that I think is kind of funny is that the shot of the cakes themselves for the Boba Fett and the C-3PO, you know, they've written out happy birthday and for, for whatever reason they chose George. Um, so happy birthday, George. I don't know why they chose that name. But. They also did uh, candy mold. So this was a thing that was popular at the time. Um, I, th I would say less popular of, t of today, but you would get these little chocolates, you would uh, melt them in a double boiler and uh, you know pour and mold these uh, chocolates. So these are definitely uh, more difficult to come by than um, the cake pans are. Um, uh, the, the ones in the middle there came uh, packaged uh, on a card, but other ones there, like the one on the left, uh, has the, you know, the information that would have just been hanging on a peg in the store. Uh, the cake put-ons are things that are meant to basically decorate a cake. 
So you would put them on a uh, cake. Yeah, saying, applied. Uh, interesting. Yep. But don't eat them. Appropriately named, yeah. And there's also Darth Vader Stormtrooper versions of those and some uh, kind of unlicensed looking ones too that came out before those. But uh, those are the, some of the ones that are more fun. Our right, company, uh, Lee Wards, and their stores had uh, these latch hook was very popular around this time, uh, very time consuming and, and make you go insane as you tried to do these, but if you've ever done a latch hook kit, uh, if you have not, I don't recommend it. So don't go looking for one of these on the floor there to buy and take home and have a little fun afternoon because it'll be 12 more years of your life that you never get back and it still won't ever finish. Um, they uh, came in both pillows and rugs, so you could adorn many areas of your house. And these are just a couple of examples, but uh, they would use, you know, kind of uncon not the common photos that you would see from the movie. So like the R2 and 3PO, you know, heading on, on Echo Base there. You don't see that image very often. That particular image of Vader is not one that you see on a lot of packaging. Uh, the Stormtroopers that they used is, you know, one from Bespin that's uh, not the same normal one that you would always see. But there was a large variety of both the pillows and the rugs that they came in. And, it, you know, for uh, vintage collectors, anytime you see the two silver little racetracks that, that are reminiscent of the Kenner figures, it, it kind of harkens back to that. And they even used the, the Hildebrandt-esque uh, Luke and Leah there in the corner as well, even though this is Empire, and you don't see that image on Empire packaging really ever. Well, and uh, these are uh, stained glass, little stained glass window, kind of not really windows, but things that you would put in your window. Uh, and for 1980, for Empire Strikes Back again, there's this whole myriad that they did for um, different characters. You could get one snow speeder. If one snow speeder wasn't enough, there was one that had two snow speeders for the same price. Uh, Yoda and R2 coming together, you know, lots of different unique ones, IG-88. So if you're an IG-88 collector, this is one of the things that you have to, to, to get for your focus. Uh, you know, there's not that many vintage IG-88 pieces, and so that was a very unique one to pick, why you would pick somebody that's mostly just metal, uh, to, grays and blacks and you know whatever for your stained glass window seems like you could pick something that would be a little more colorful uh, but anyway uh, Vader is just as a Vader helmet full Vader uh, it's very very difficult to find these as well so again with many of these products they weren't saved or they weren't um, you can't find them in, in very good condition these days so that's one of the challenges of collecting Star Wars around the house uh, from the vintage era is being able to find the ones in in really good condition and these were shrink wrapped on a card so uh, it just makes them sort of inherently uh, fragile I guess yeah they start to peel to, up to, and to, yeah, yeah the, yep. the peeling apart or the corners getting bent or so forth. One of the interesting things about these, I think, is just how different the scale is. I mean, if you compare Vader's head to the Luke on a Tauntaun, it's, uh, you know, it's just vastly different and similar with the snow speeders that you mentioned. And the snow trooper, he's got the, like the big gun that he's firing, right, instead of, uh, you know, the big E-web, as they call it these days. The kids are calling it. Um, but, you know, that's, um, again, not your normal Thing that you would see with a snowtrooper. Very few snowtrooper things anyway, too. Anyway. Well, that's our little tour around the house, so hopefully you uh, saw some new stuff, and thank you all very much for attending.